Hello, and thank you for tuning in. My name is Carolyn Chatterton. I am a third-year OBGYN resident at Good Samaritan Hospital Medical Center in West Islip, New York. Today, I will be sharing the presentation titled, Efficacy of Different Suture Materials in Reducing Preterm Birth. Cervical insufficiency, the underlying indication for cercolage placement, is defined as painless cervical dilation in the second trimester before 24 weeks gestation. In order to meet this definition, there must be no contractions or other clear pathology such as bleeding, infection, or ruptured membranes. The exact pathophysiology of cervical insufficiency is poorly understood, but there are several suspected risk factors. These include history of cervical surgery, dilation of the cervix during pregnancy termination or loss, obstetric cervical laceration, congenital mullerian anomalies, deficiency in cervical collagen and elastin. Ultimately, there is inconsistent data regarding these associations. One of the treatments for cervical insufficiency is cerclage placement. There are three possible indications for cerclage placement, history, ultrasound, or physical exam indicated. For all of these, the index pregnancy must be a singleton gestation. For history-indicated cerclages, these are indicated in patients with a history of one or more second trimester pregnancy losses related to cervical dilation and the absence of labor or placental abruption. Or it is for patients with a history of a cerclage in the prior pregnancy due to cervical insufficiency. Ultrasound-indicated cerclages are for patients with a prior spontaneous preterm birth less than 34 weeks and current short cervix less than 25 millimeters before 24 weeks. And finally, physical exam indicated cerclages, also known as a rescue cerclage, is for patients found to have painless cervical dilation in the second trimester of a current singleton gestation. Cerclages may be placed either transvaginally or transabdominally, and there are two primary transvaginal cerclage placement techniques, the McDonald and the Schrodkar, both of which may also be modified. Superiority of transvaginal cerclage technique has not been established. Abdominal cerclage is reserved for patients with anatomic limitations to vaginal cerclage placement or with a history of a prior failed vaginal cerclage placement. A McDonald cerclage is pictured on the slide. This is the preferred technique at our institution. The type of suture material is also a consideration and is the focus of the research presented in this presentation. While it is agreed that cerclage suture material should be non-absorbable, other properties are up for debate. The three types of suture material studied in this project include proline, a monofilament suture, and mersaline tape and ethabond, both braided sutures. Unlike mersaline, ethabond has a coating. Prior studies have analyzed the efficacy of various suture materials. One of the prior studies examining outcomes related to suture material is titled Efficacy of Different Cerclage Suture Material in Reducing Preterm Birth. It was published by Stafford et al. in March of 2019. This retrospective chart review from 2011 to 2016 included 109 patients. It was found that there is no significant difference in gestational age at time of cerclage placement, indication for cerclage placement, use of progesterone or tocolytics, or maternal characteristics. Overall, this study found no significant difference in pregnancy prolongation for the different suture materials. Also, there was no difference with respect to rates of maternal infection or adverse neonatal outcomes. On the other side of the debate, a published study in 2016 titled Relationship Between Vaginal Microbial Dysbiosis, Inflammation, and pregnancy outcomes in cervical cerclage by Kindinger et al. demonstrated results indicating superiority of monofilament suture. This retrospective chart review included 671 patients over a 10-year period in the United Kingdom. The braided suture group was found to have an increased rate of non-viable birth less than 24 weeks, intrauterine death, and preterm birth. It was also found that the braided group had reduced lactobacillus and increased anaerobic bacteria in the vaginal microbiome. Given that there is a lack of consensus regarding outcomes based on suture material, 
we aim to compare the pregnancy outcomes among the three suture materials, mersaline, ethabond, and proline, for patients who had cerclage placement. This is a retrospective chart review with data extracted from electronic medical records using diagnostic codes. All cerclage indications were included, and all cerclage placement and subsequent deliveries were completed at our institution between August 2013 and May 2019. Patients with multifetal gestation, a known fetal aneuploidy, or with medically indicated delivery were excluded from the study. The primary outcome measure for this study is the gestational age at time of delivery. The secondary outcomes are the rate of maternal infectious morbidity and neonatal outcomes. IRB approval was obtained. Categorical variables were analyzed using the chi-squared test. Fisher exact test was used for small sample size less than 5. For continuous variables, a NOVA test was performed. Initially, 163 patients were identified who had a cerclage placed at our institution during the defined time period. From this, 77 patients were excluded. Ultimately, our study population included 86 patients, 6 with mersaline tape placement, 50 with ethabond placement, and 30 with proline placement. This table demonstrates the distribution of maternal characteristics in comparison of which suture material was used. Maternal age was similar between the three groups with a mean age between 30 to 32 for each group. Ethnicity and body mass index or BMI were also similar. There was also no difference in smoking status, parity, or history of preterm delivery between the groups. With regards to a history of prior cerclage placement and a history of prior cervical surgery, there was also no difference between the groups. This table compares variables related to cerclage characteristics. For all patients in this study, McDonald's cerclage placement technique with anterior knot placement was used. The majority of cerclages were indicated based on history. In the proline group, the cervical length was found to be significantly shorter than the mersaline tape and ethabond groups, with a median cervical length of 1.7 cm at the time of cerclage placement, and a p-value of 0.03. It was also found that patients in the proline group were more commonly had two stitches placed compared to other suture material groups. Analysis of patients who received amniocentesis prior to cerclage placement was significant as more patients who received proline opted for amniocentesis prior to cerclage placement. When examining the cerclage indications among patients who opted for amniocentesis, the majority of these were due to exam-indicated cerclages. 100% of patients who had a cerclage with mersaline tape used progesterone therapy, 50% of them with IM progesterone, and the other 50% with vaginal progesterone. This finding is statistically significant. The majority of patients did not receive antibiotics with cerclage placement, and there was no st significant difference with the use of tocolytic therapy. However, when a tocolytic was used, indocin was more common than nifedipine. Mean gestational age at time of delivery ranged from 34 weeks to 38 weeks, with no statistical difference between the groups. For the proline group, in which the cervical length was found to be significantly shorter prior to cerclage placement, 57% of patients delivered at greater than 37 weeks gestation. The latency time between cerclage placement and delivery was an average of 17 to 19 weeks among the groups. Proline showed a nearly equivalent latency period to ethabond, regardless of the initially shorter starting cervical length. There was no significant difference in neonatal birth weights or length of NICU stay. Similarly, there was no significant difference in composite neonatal morbidity or mortality. However, analysis of individual outcomes demonstrated a higher rate of necrotizing enterocolitis and neonatal death with the mersaline tape group. 
In general, Marceline tape is associated with a trend towards increased percentage of patients with adverse neonatal outcomes. However, further studies with a larger sample size is warranted. In conclusion, there was no difference in gestational age at delivery among the three suture material groups. However, a notable outcome is that the proline group started with an initial cervical length that was significantly shorter compared to the other groups, however ultimately had the same length of pregnancy prolongation when compared to ethabond and mersaline tape. When observing neonatal outcomes, the mersaline tape group had an increased rate of necrotizing enterocolitis and neonatal death. However, the sample size was small. References are listed on this slide. I would like to acknowledge the following for their support in this presentation. Dr. Gurum, Dr. Vulo, Dr. Sampino, and Dr. Nandam. Thank you for your participation in this presentation.